If you keep on getting rejected and you're getting frustrated in your job search, maybe it's time for a career makeover. What does a career makeover look like? Stick around and I will tell you more. Hey everybody, it's Brian from Life After Layoff. Today I wanna to talk to you about the concept of career makeovers, especially for people who are struggling in their job search. Now, if you're watching this, maybe you find yourself in a particularly difficult job search where you're just not having any luck. So I see this a lot with people who reach out to me. There is a sense of kind of desperation with the job market currently being what it is. Now, as I record this, we're in the middle of a pandemic. It is one of the more challenging job seeking environments probably in your lifetime. And yes, it is harder to get hired now than it was even uh, a year ago. When you're constantly getting rejected, it's easy to start really losing your confidence in yourself and what you've been doing and really starting to doubt whether or not you're even gonna get another job. Know in the back of your mind that this is harder than it normally is and you're up against a ton more competition than you typically would be. I talk a lot about this on my channel. I talk a lot about this on my LinkedIn. Um, I talk a lot about this to clients that I work with. You have to be razor focused and all of your tools need to be really honed in. Now, I'm a corporate recruiter. I've got 20 years of experience hiring thousands of people into some of the world's most well-known and well-respected companies. So I know a thing or two about job seeking, about how to get people placed into major corporations. And, and again, I wanna, I wanna stress to you that it's a difficult time to be working, looking for a position. If you're struggling, I actually put together a five day, it's a free five day boot camp for job seekers. Now it's gonna give you a lot of information throughout that five day course. Again, it's free, so I highly encourage you to check it out. There is a link in the description below. It is going to take you from cradle to grave. Um, we, we cover things like resumes and resume strategy. We talked about LinkedIn strategy. We talk about the major differences between somebody that's getting positions and getting hired and the people who are struggling and, and why there's a vicious loop there. Check it out. It's the free five-day boot camp. I really, really uh, recommend that. One of the things that I see kind of common thread throughout people who especially have gone through long and difficult job search processes, I'm talking six months plus, six months, eight months, even seen some people that are well over a year into their job search and they're just not having any luck. If you're trying the same things, in almost every case with folks who are that unemployed for those periods of time, there are issues in your in your job strategy. And um, without seeing you specifically who's watching this, um, I can't say for sure, but I'm going to be willing to bet that if you are in that boat, there is a high likelihood that you don't have an optimized resume, you don't have a clear vision of who you are, what value you bring. Um, and it's not, a, it's, it's not necessarily, um, it's not meant to be a, an attack, so I, please don't take it that way. It's just really there's weaknesses. And just like when you go to a gym and you are weak on pull-ups, and it just you avoid doing the pull-ups because they're hard, that just means that your back is weak. And so you need to do little exercises to be able to build up and really address the areas that you're most weak in. And it's the same thing for job search. If you're weak in something, whether it's interviewing, whether it's you're not getting interviews, maybe when you do get the interviews, you bomb them or you get real nervous and you don't really, you never seem to get to the, the finish line and get that offer. You're always in second place or the, you're always the uh, bridesmaid and not the bride, so to speak. Those are all indicators of overall weakness. Now, not in every case, so I don't want people to feel like, oh, I gotta, I'm, I'm completely weak in everything. But in a lot of cases, if you're continuing to see the same patterns of behavior over or the same, the same things over and over again, it is time to really start looking at, is there a weakness that you need to address? And in some cases, there's weakness that it's not even necessarily it's not even necessarily something that you have a you're bad at interviewing or you aren't aren't good at what you your job is, but maybe it's just that there's not a demand for what you're doing anymore. And I I do find that a lot of times if you're a person that has worked in a job for years and years and then you suddenly find yourself unemployed, a lot of times the market has passed you by. There's the skill sets that people work on, the types of software that people are most interested in, how people approach work changes very rapidly. And so if you're not exposed to that, if you've kind of worked in, maybe you've worked in a smaller company for a lot of your career, um, or you've worked in kind of a niched industry for a lot of your career where those companies aren't necessarily on the cutting edge of changing all the time, uh, you might find yourself when you come out of the open market, man, I'm like, I'm really far behind everybody else because it's such a competitive market in our and especially in major corporations, we are looking for very targeted, very effective people to fill our positions. 
So you have to be one of those people. And, and I know that that sounds kind of like sometimes people look at it and go, oh, it's a mountain that I got to climb. But it's the truth. And so you really need to adjust and look at yourself very um, with a, a high degree of um, self-reflection and really see how you stack up against potential competition. You do that through looking at a variety of job descriptions, trying to get feedback from when, when you're getting a reject, ejection, if you're getting a rejection, try to get some feedback if you can from the recruiter, if they will give it to you, or at least try to look at if you can even, I know this is kind of hard to do, but if you see somebody at a position that you interviewed for that you didn't get, when you see the person that did get it, go in and look at their profile because it'll actually give you some re recon or reconnaissance on what was it about that person that got hired that I didn't have. So then it's like stuff that you need to start circling and you need to start putting together kind of an action plan. So it kind of brings you full circle. And if you're finding yourself that keep you keep getting rejected for the same reasons over and over again, maybe you should really consider looking at a career makeover. Now, it doesn't mean that you're doing a wholesale change of career or anything like that. In some, in some cases, people might want to do that. But if you're somebody that likes the career path that you're on, that likes the industry or likes the type of work that you're doing or has built up a long career of it, Maybe it's time that you need to look at how do I readjust because if you keep on finding yourself getting it rejected over and over again for the same reasons, you're probably going to continue to experience that heading going into the future if you don't change something that you're doing. So it's the, what's the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again the same way and expecting a different result. If you keep on getting rejected because you're gapping on certain skill sets in the marketplace that is now demanding those skills, you need to fill in the gaps and you need to figure out a way to get that stuff on your resume and, and in a way that is going to market you in a more effective manner. You know, for some of you, it could be getting new skills. So if we're looking at the concept of how do we rebrand ourselves. It could be getting new skills. Um, so, I mean, that could even be self-directed learning. It doesn't always have to mean that you have to go back to school. Like you could go and actually find a way to, if you're, say, you're a computer programmer and you just don't have a certain language that you are familiar with, I mean, it's pretty easy to go in and, and get some uh, familiarity with those skill sets by self-directed learning. In some cases, it might be even going back and getting formalized schooling um, or something that will get you those skill sets if it's, a, if it's a technical or a hard skill that you need to have. If it is something that you're finding that you are lacking experience in. So say you just don't have the right kind of experience or you've got some of the right experience, but you just keep on getting rejected because you're always kind of one. They'll say, well, you've got some of the right stuff, but you're missing this other key stuff and it's experience based. You got to figure out a way to get that experience. If you keep on, if you're not doing that, if you're unemployed and you're just applying for positions, but you're not addressing the gaps on your resume, you're wasting a huge opportunity. So fill in those gaps by figuring out what the experience gaps are and then addressing them, figuring out a way to address them. You know, in some cases it might be uh, a really effective way for somebody that is further along in their career uh, is get a contracting position. You know, stop looking necessarily at full time as the only opportunity for you. Maybe there's an opportunity to pivot into a contracting role that actually gets you that type of specific experience, especially with a pedigree company, you know, that's a company that people have heard of that's going to have kind of buying power on the open market and and really try to get that experience through, you know, through that way. Now you've at least got some of that real life experience. You can talk about that in interviews. Um, but contracting is a way. Some people are afraid of it, but don't be afraid of it. If you if you are looking to reinvent yourself or rebrand yourself, contracting is a great way to do it. The second major way that you could do it is you could look at volunteer work. So you know maybe there's a local organization that is looking for some volunteer or charity work um, that could help you implement some of those skill sets in HR. Like I know in HR, I see. I see charity stuff pop up all the time on my LinkedIn feed where people are looking for volunteer. You know, it's like maybe 20 hours or 10 hours a week or something like that, but it gives you a chance to at least kind of dabble in some new things and maybe put together a new skill that you didn't have before. Or you could even work on a personal project. So if you're a computer programmer, especially young computer programmers that don't have a lot of experience out of school, if you're entry level, you know, work on some personal projects. Look at what the look at what the market is demanding, and come up with a personal project that kind of simulates that. And at least it'll give you something to talk about problem solving. We like to hear about how you solve the problem. How did you get? You know, that even give you an answer on a question. How do you? How did you fill in a gap that you didn't have before? And you can now talk about it. How you were unemployed and you decided you needed to get this skill gap filled, so you did the X, Y, and Z. And that's a great answer to an interview question. 
Um, and then the, the last major thing that I really think you should be focused on is you got to rebuild those. If you haven't spent any meaningful time building your networks, your networks are absolutely going to be something that you should be relying on, especially pivoting into a new role. So reach out to people that you used to work with. Um, um, look at your LinkedIn networks in your local area. Um, potentially go and look at civic groups or maybe it's a, a church group that you belong to or maybe even your neighbors. Uh, but really what you're looking for is building a robust network and being active and engaged in that process. I see some people taking that advice on my LinkedIn, for example, where they are completely unrelated to you know what they're talking about, but they'll go in and they'll be constantly posting stuff and they're getting a ton of engagement. And that engagement means eyeballs on their profile. And I know in some cases, because they started getting really engaged in LinkedIn and other places that they actually started getting people writing them and saying, hey, I'd like to interview you. So it actually led to interviews. So if you're looking for, if you're struggling in your job search and you're doing the same things over and over again, you know, think about that rebranding piece. The next major thing I want to talk about is making sure that your tools are accurate. So if you've got a bad resume or a resume that's just not getting results, if you're just not, if you're, if you're applying for position after position and you're not getting results, and you're just not even getting any phone calls, it's almost always gonna be a resume issue. So if your resume isn't helping you, and you'll know that by you're just not getting any phone calls, if that means it doesn't help you, especially assuming that you're applying for positions that you're reasonably qualified for. But if you're applying for positions and you're just not getting phone calls, your resume is almost always the problem. So address the resume issue, okay? So if you don't know if your resume is hurting or helping you, the, the biggest indicator is, is are you getting interviews or not? So if you're not getting interviews, it's an indicator that your resume is going to be a problem. I look at thousands of resumes each and every year, and I can tell you that a vast majority of resumes really are not helping people. So if you're not quite sure how to get your resume up to snuff, I do have some training resources. You can check out the links in my bio, um, but I'm not necessarily here to, to push that today. But um, what I would suggest, though, is that is going to be probably the biggest bang for your buck is making sure that your resume is completely airtight especially for those of you who are not getting recruited um, through passive sourcing. So that would mean like I as a recruiter go out and find you and start uh, trying to find you to, to recruit into my company versus you applying for a position. Most people who are unemployed are applying for positions. And um, you know, we talk about that in the five-day boot camp. So um, if you are somebody that is not getting recruited and you're applying for positions, your resume is going to be your biggest tool. And so if, that's, if you don't have your tools sharpened, so to speak, that's another part of your, you know, don't send out the same resume that's not getting results over and over and over again. It's, it's kind of, again, it's a definition of insanity. So really think about from that perspective as a job seeker, is it time to rebrand yourself or is it time to do a career makeover? You know, maybe you know, one other thing that you should think about, and, and um, I actually decided to do this myself. We actually relocated in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> and I didn't have a job lined up or anything like that. I uh, just decided that the, the market that we were in, um, I was in a pretty northern area and it was. Uh, we decided we wanted to go south and get into a different type of geographic area and so we, we actually moved and we got into an area that we feel a lot better fit for but it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it can be a challenge. If you're in an area that just doesn't have a lot of positions or you're not properly um, aligned to the types of positions that they're there. Maybe it's just a certain industry is dominant and you just don't have that experience. You know, I mean, if you have the ability and the wherewithal and you're not in a place where you're happy, you know, make a huge, make a big, make a big change, really mix it up. Get somewhere where you're going to be happy and get somewhere where you, that you can potentially um, find a career that's going to work for you. It can be done. Uh, I did it very inexpensively and moved about I don't know, about 600 miles uh, away. We did it ourselves. We rented U-Hauls, sold a home on my, you know, I sold a home and um, basically packed up everything and, and left. Um, so without any, you know, any position lined up and was able to do it very inexpensively, like surprisingly inexpensively. Maybe I'll talk about that on another on another video. So point being is that if you are struggling with your job search and you are continuing to experience the same poor results or lack of result, it's time to start thinking about doing a career mix up, a career makeover. Look at your skill sets, find where you're gapping, start to address those things. Don't just keep doing the same thing and hope that eventually an employer will find you because you're going to be in such a position of um, 
a weakness when you are going into a an interview and you're applying you're, you're literally going to take any crappy job that comes your way and you know you deserve better than the crappy jobs right we want to we want to target a uh, a high performing pedigree type of company on our resume because if you get that pedigree a well-known well-established well-respected company it's going to hold a lot of weight in the open market so you don't want to settle for just some you know, I hate to say some crappy local company that doesn't pay you well, doesn't treat you well, doesn't have the most modern um, business practices and business processes. Um, you really want to try to get those pedigree companies. So, you know, if you're if you're struggling, it's t- it's time to really start thinking about that that career makeover. I just want to put some of those thoughts out there. I'm seeing a lot of this stuff um, on people that reach out to me through LinkedIn, through YouTube, through other through my website, which is lifeafterlayoff.com. And I'm just seeing this as a common thread. So something to check out, um, something to really start thinking about. If you need any help, reach me through my website. Again, it's lifeafterlayoff.com. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you found any value in this video. And um, hit a like button because it actually helps other people find similar content. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.